Absolute and apparent luminosity. Now, in the last lecture, we noticed that the sun has something known as luminosity, which planets don't have. This tells you how bright it is, how, how much energy it emits. So absolute luminosity is a measure of how much energy a star gives off. And the more energy it gives off, of course, it will look bright in the sky. So it will determine how bright the star is. The luminosity of the sun we noticed was 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. Now we are going to call that one. So we can compare the other stars to it. Okay, we're going to call it one and then we're going to compare other stars to it. Mass luminosity relation. The mass luminosity relation says that the more mass a star has, the more energy it will emit. This pretty much makes sense, right? If it has a lot of mass, a lot of atoms, it's going to bind them together, fuse them together, it's going to create more energy and it's going to shine brighter, okay? So it shouldn't be a surprise. This is the equation. L equals m to the power 3 and a half. Or the other way you can write it is m cubed times square root of m. So this is the first time that you're going to get to try your uh, calculator. If a star has a mass 20 times the mass of the sun, how much more energy or how much more luminosity should it have? So what you should do to your calculator now, take 20 and raise it to the power 3 and a half. And the answer you get should be 35,000. Okay, I'll walk around and I'll see if everyone is getting that. What the process is doing. Uh, you are taking the number, you're multiplying it by itself three times, you're cubing it, and then you're taking the number, square rooting it, and then you're multiplying it by that number. But the sh the, this is the short way of doing it. This is just in one step, you know. So that star will be 35,000 times as bright as the sun. 35,000 times as bright, okay? If the mass is 50, then what is the number? Now you take 50 and raise it to the power 3.5. Do the same thing, basically. 50 to the power 3.5 is m to the 3 and a half equals m cubed times square root of m. Yeah. That's the same thing as doing that. So basically, what we're finding out is this. If the mass of the sun, if the mass of the star is 20, the luminosity of the star is 35,777. 35,000 times as bright as the sun. If you looked at a data table of stars, they probably would not write all of those numbers. They would probably write this in scientific notation. So how would they do? They would go back one, two, three, four, and then they, they probably would write 3.58 times 10 to the, because this would round this up to eight, times 10 to the what power? One, two, three, four, times 10 to the fourth power. All right, so the data tables aren't always gonna give you all of the numbers. So if the mass of the star is uh, 50, then the uh, luminosity of the star, 883, 883. So what is that? How would they write that in scientific? Uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8.83 times 10 to the fifth, right? That means almost a million, almost 10 to the sixth, right? Now, why did I write here L max? Why did I call that? L max, what am I trying to say there? What did we see in the previous slide? Yeah, yeah, we noticed that about the heaviest that a star can get before collapsing is about 50 times the sun's mass. Well, if it's 50 times the sun's mass is the heaviest, I want to know what is the brightest star that it could we could possibly have. What's the brightest, highest luminosity? So this is about the brightest luminosity star. So roughly what I'm going to say, the conclusion out of this, since this is almost 10 times 10 to the fifth, this is almost 10 to the sixth. So what I'm going to conclude is that about a million times brighter than the sun is about the brightest that a star can be. 
It's a, it's a million. Imagine if we lived around a star like that, million times the brightness of our sun. We couldn't live one AU away from it and exist. We would boil away. We would have to live uh, maybe t uh, 10 AUs away from it, 30 AUs away from it for life to be comfortable, you see? So the brighter and the hotter the star is, you have to live farther away from that star in order to have life as we know it, in order to have water in its liquid form. Otherwise, water will boil away, you see? And then, oh, I would also like to know what is the minimum luminosity? What was the minimum mass that we said a star can be? And then if you do 0 0.08, to the power of three and a half, this is what I got. 1.45 times 10 to the negative four. Okay? So that's about the, the dimmest star that you can have, the dimmest, okay? What does that mean? I'm, I'm gonna ignore this number for a second. I'm just gonna say the dimmest star that you could have is about one ten thousandth because 10 to the 4 is 10,000. One ten thousandth of the sun's uh, luminosity, of the luminosity of the sun. That means the sun is 10,000 times brighter than the dimmest possible star you can have. 10,000 times brighter than the dimmest star. And the dimmest star is 10,000 times less dimmer, I mean more dimmer than the sun, you see. Oh, by the way, if we go quickly to this file that I told you, to print out. And you're going to need this file to do your HR diagram assignment. So you're going to see these stars is a list of the stars in our neighborhood. These are known as our nearest stars. I've shown you this before because when we were first learning about our, what's the closest star to the sun, I mentioned Proxima Centauri, didn't I? I said it was only um, four light years away. And then the next brightest star is Alpha Centauri, Alpha Centauri four light years away, Barnard star five light years away. So if you look at this list, it goes up to a distance of what? 13 light years away. That's the neighborhood of our sun. Now, if you look at the last column, that will tell you the luminosity of that star as compared to the sun. The sun is defined as one. You see? Sun is one. So if I look at Proxima Centauri, what is its luminosity? 8.2 times 10 to the fourth. You see, it's brighter than this guy, the most minimum it can be. It's a little higher. But it's very dim compared to the sun still, you see? How about Alpha Centauri, the one right after that? 1.77, what does that mean? Is it brighter than the sun or dimmer? Brighter. So if you have the file, circle that. If I ask you on the test, which stars in our neighborhood are brighter than the sun? You look at that sheet, if you have it circled, you can have it spotted already. Alpha Centauri, brighter than the sun, almost twice as bright. Then the next one, Alpha Centauri B, whenever it says A and B, that means they're binary stars. They're going around each other, okay? Binary. The B is not as bright as the sun, 0.55. Then you got 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, 0.023, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 4. M most of them are dimmer than the sun, you see? How about this guy? Let's find out how many are brighter than the sun. Sirius A, 26 times brighter than the sun. Wow. Okay, it's only eight light years away. 26 times brighter. And then if you keep looking, do you see another one? Mm 
you see another one? 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4. They're all pretty dim. Uh, I think I saw another one. 7. 7 times brighter than the sun. Which one is that? Prokion A. It's another binary pair. And that's kind of funny. It seems like the binary pairs, the first of those binary pairs are brighter than the sun. The A and the B, you know. Uh, so Prokion A. 7 times brighter than the sun. That's one of them. Sirius. Sirius A, 26 times brighter than the sun. It's also part of a binary, and it's the first pair of that binary. Huh. Some pattern, huh? A and B. Alpha Centauri A, brighter than the sun, part of a binary, and still brighter than the sun. Huh. Is it possible that whenever there's a binary, the bigger one of the pair sucks energy from the smaller one and gains, starts gaining energy, becomes bright. Could that be the reason? Maybe one of the reasons, okay? But I'm not saying it definitely is, but it could maybe explain. Or maybe some other phenomenon explains this, but it's kind of weird that uh, the three of them that are brighter are the first of the binary pair, okay? How about in the other list? The bright stars list. Well, we shouldn't be surprised that if we find a lot of stars in this list that are brighter than the sun. Why? This represents a list of the brightest stars in the sky when you go out at night. When you, someone goes out at night and looks at the sky and says, okay, what stars are there in the night that I can see with my naked eye without needing a telescope? Okay? Would you expect those stars to be brighter than the sun? Probably, because they're many light years away and we can still see them, <laughs> yeah, all right? So how, much, how, many, how many times brighter? Okay, Sirius A, which we thought was really bright, it was 26 times brighter than the sun, <laughs> no longer bright on this list. Look at this guy, Canopus, 1.4 times 10 to the fourth. So how would you say that in terms of wording? 1.4 times 10 to the fourth. 10 to the 4th is 10,000. 1.4 times 10,000 is 14,000. 14,000 times brighter than the sun. 190 times brighter than the sun. 1.77 is the one we already saw. Um, oh no, it's actually this one, Rigel Cantaurus. Then 61, 180, 7 times 10 to the 5th, 7, uh, 52.5, uh, 4.1 times 10 to the 4th. So you see basically they're all brighter than the sun. If I ask you which one of these is the brightest, which one is the brightest? Let's look here. We got to look here at the power and see which one is the biggest. I think this one, 10 to the fifth. We go, we go, we go, we go, we go. Regal, Regal. All right, this one, Rigel or Regal. It's the second brightest star in the constellation Orion, Beta Orionis, remember that? Greek letter with the uh, genitive case of the constellation. Beta Orionis, it's 773 light years away from us, and it's seven times 10 to the fifth times as bright as the sun. 700,000 times as bright as the sun, 700,000. Notice that it's within this limit. We said the, the brightest it could be is around 8.83 .8 times 10 to the fifth. So 7 times 10 to the fifth is kind of under that limit. It's close to that. And then other than that, the rest are dimmer. So Rigel is the brightest one.